loving, baby. Oh, hi. Guys, I know we don't make very many videos because it's a lot of work. But somebody on YouTube asked if we could make like a update video. Since our last video that we literally made a year ago about our, um, about how we almost got divorced and how we saved our relationship before that. Um, so yeah, we figured, uh, we, like people asked us a bunch of questions, so I guess we'll answer a couple of them in this video, but mostly we just kind of wanted to update you guys on what happened in the last year since we made that um, first video. So, okay, so we made the last video in, I don't know, like February or March or something like that. If you've been following along on any of our social media, um, you know that a couple of months after we made that video, we did um, get pregnant again. Uh, that pregnancy did not go well. There's a video on this YouTube channel somewhere, I think about it, but if you don't know, basically we found out we were pregnant in March. About a week later, we thought we had a miscarriage because I was bleeding for like a week. Um, then a month after that, it turned out that I was still pregnant. Uh, about a month later, <laughs> we found out we were still pregnant and it ended up being ectopic, which was our second ectopic pregnancy which went really bad, um, to say the least. Uh, my tube ended up busting after I left the gym. And I, long story short, I ended up losing like three liters of blood. I had to have emergency surgery. They took my last tube, almost died, all that jazz. So that was very crazy because if you recall in our first video, um, the first ectopic pregnancy was kind of what kind of not led us to our almost divorce, but it really, I mean, it basically did. Like, it was kind of like the start of things going crazy. So, when we had this one, it was very um, important to me for us and to Big Daddy too for us to not go down the same road again. Like, of he would. He was nervous about getting pregnant again because he was like, what if it happens again? And I was like, what are the chances it'll happen again? Like, it was only a 2% chance that it happened the first time. So, like, it definitely won't happen again. But then it did happen again. So, I know that he was like, see, this is what I was talking about. So, I had to really make sure that I didn't go through any of the stages of, like, depression or just sadness that I went through the first time that ultimately left led to our separation. After that, you know, we're starting the healing process, whatever. We did really good. Like, there were a couple of days that like, we were really sad or whatever and just didn't really know how to wrap our mind around everything. But the biggest thing we did was we decided that right away we were gonna figure out what was next. Like, we weren't gonna like wallow in the sadness of the whole situation. So that was in April. So in July ish, well, it took three months for me to recover from the surgery since I have a blood transfusion and everything. So we started talking about IVF, um, in vitro fertilization, if you're not familiar with it, um, which was our only option if we wanted to have kids because without any tubes, I no longer have the necessary parts to conceive naturally so that was our only option um it was a really big blow just to learn that i was that that was our only option because it's very expensive um it's between 20 and twenty five thousand dollars if you get all the bells and whistles um so it was kind of like okay well what are we gonna do we didn't have the twenty five thousand dollars because we had just gotten back together both of us did some silly things while we weren't together so it was like we when we got back together it was like a restructuring of our marriage and our life together so financially we were not where we should have been or where we normally would be so finding out we had to pay that money for ivf if we wanted to have kids it was like okay well are we gonna save wait and save up the money which will probably take us about six months to a year if we were really diligent with it um are we gonna take out a loan big daddy hates debt so he definitely didn't want to do that i didn't care i was just like well whatever we got to do we got to do because in my mind i was like well it's better to to do it now to figure out how to do it now and figure out how to pay for it now instead of waiting until i'm over 35 because when you're over 35 you potentially have more issues and I'm about to be 34 in a couple of months so 
anyway we kind of went back and forth about that for a couple of weeks it did get a little it did get a little rough in that for for a minute mm -hmm. we <laughs> it was kind of scary because it was like once again we were coming back into that situation which had brought us so far apart in the first time so you could tell we were both like trying not to um step on each other's feet or like upset the other person but both were very like set in our ways like i wanted to do it no matter what and he was kind of like just smart not just smart <laughs> yeah smart but <laughs> not just smart like reserved and what he wanted to say like i, I think he didn't want to like upset me but at the same time he didn't want us to be in like financial ruin over it big daddy is the um money savvy person in the relationship i'm kind of just like whatever i'll do whatever i want and figure it out later so he's the one that kind of keeps us grounded financially so once we realized we were kind of like going separate ways about it then we reached out to my pastor who reached out to my old pastor um to see if that he could counsel us um yeah. Yeah, remember? Mm -hmm. That was so good. So I wanted a male counselor this time because the first time we went to counseling, before we separated, we had a female counselor and I I didn't want him. I wanted somebody that no matter what I knew would be able to relate to Big Daddy because if there were things that I was missing, I wanted that person to be able to open my eyes to that as well. So we went to go see my old pastor and we we only had one session and like literally walked out of the session and like all of our questions had been answered and like it was like the best 45 minutes we ever had because he kind of just broke it down for both of us what needed to be done anyway um yeah we had the uh counseling session and for me it was really eye-opening because our pastor was just like said but he was just like why don't you care about how your husband feels about this and i was like because i don't she <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> literally said that i was oh, like because i don't care like what i want is what i want and he was just like yeah that's not really a thing and he was like you at that time we didn't even know exactly how much ivf was we just knew it was really expensive and he was like you guys are like frustrated and going separate ways about something that's arbitrary and you guys don't even know how much it is so first you guys need to sit down and figure out how much it is then you guys need to sit down and figure out collectively what you both can do so that you can make it happen. It shouldn't be all on him. It shouldn't be all on you. But he made me realize that, like, Big Daddy was just trying to, like, not let us go into financial debt. Like, although something that he wanted as well, to him it wasn't worth us messing up the life that we had already built for ourselves. So that was really good for us. It was so great. It was like when we left there, we were like, okay, we can do this. So this time is probably July or August. And a friend of mine had offered to make a GoFundMe. Actually, a couple of my friends had offered to make a GoFundMe account. And I was kind of just like, mm, I don't know, <laughs> because we share a lot. But for me, it was hard because financially, I knew that there was no reason that I should not have had $20,000 in savings to pay for it so it was kind of a wake-up call for me as to how like i would frivolously spend money and it was just something that i just wasn't really ready to put like out to the world like that especially being a makeup artist a successful makeup artist it was just like yeah kara like what are you what are you doing with your life but we did it <laughs> my friend karen she made the GoFundMe for us and it was wildly successful. Um, we raised probably around between nine and ten thousand dollars cash on GoFundMe in about three weeks. So it was crazy. It was the most beautiful thing I've ever experienced in my life. So then after that happened, a complete stranger saw our story. Her name is Chris and her husband Chris and their baby Olivia and I won't get into all the details of how this happened but um, they ended up donating around $4,000 worth of fertility meds to us 
So that was amazing because at that point it kind of gave us so at that so that's like thirteen thousand. I think at the end of the day we probably paid around twenty five, um, but that gave us enough because then we were able to come up with the rest between us. So we started IVF. <laughs> um, I was really scared. Um, I was really scared. I remember when the meds, the needles and stuff showed up at the door and like I opened the box and I looked at the needles and I was like, yeah, no, I can't do this. And then Big Daddy looked at me with like the most serious face ever. He was like, you don't have a choice. And I was like, you're right, I don't. So it was like, if I wanna have kids, which if you know me, no, that's like the one thing that I wanted. I was just like, okay, I gotta figure out how to do it. So we started and we found the most amazing doctor in the world. Her name is Dr. Cindy Duke at a Nevada Fertility Institute. We started our journey. It was really scary. Like I said, I remember just like crying. Remember when they were teaching us how to use meds? Were you there that day? Or was it just mom? No. Oh yeah, they were teaching us how to do the meds, like how to draw back the medication and mix it. And I was literally just in the corner bawling, crying because it was so overwhelming. And I was just like, I'm like very good at some things, but other things just like go in one ear and out the other. And everything she was saying, I don't even think it makes it in. <laughs> Everything she was saying, I was just like, and she just kept explaining it, kept explaining it. And I'm looking at her like, <laughs> like, do you have any clue that I do not understand what you're telling me right now? She's like, and you put this much of this and you put it in here and then you give yourself a shot on the left side. And there's a video, so it'll be fine. And I'm just like crying like, will it be fine? Because I was just like, this is not something that I can mess up. And I'm not a very like detailed oriented person. Like I said, I just kind of like go with the flow. Whatever happens, happens. Like I don't, that's him. That's his part. But for the most part, I was, go he was going to be at work while I was doing most of the shots. So it was like, I knew he wasn't going to be here to help me with this. So it was like, okay, like I have to figure this out. The first step in IVF is um, egg retrieval. So we did about um, nine to 10 days of meds and hormone injections before the egg retrieval. And then we did the egg retrieval. So anyway, we did my egg retrieval. We got nine eggs, nine eggs out of the nine eggs, six fertilized with his sperm so then we had six embryos um out of the six embryos we had the pgs tested i can't remember what that stands for but it's where they test the embryos platinum for, like, growth stimulation that is not what it stands for <laughs> lord so uh out of the six that we had pgs tested four of them came back normal oh yeah it's when they test the embryos for abnormalities Whatever, they just have something to make sure they're good, healthy babies. So, out of six, four came back healthy. So, three were girls and one was a boy. So, I was thrilled, okay? He was like, just one boy. <laughs> but I was so happy because I was just like, oh my God, that's four chances. That's four chances for it to work. If it doesn't work the first time, we do it again. My body had to like get rid of the stuff that we did. And I don't know, we had to do other shots and then we had to start the progesterone injections. That was a big old needle like this big and it had to go in my butt every night for like ever. From like November 11th to seriously like two weeks ago. It was like two and a half months for real. Because that was for fake, what you just did. How big was it? Oh, it was probably like that big. Wow! <laughs> that needle was not that big. That needle was yeah. like this big. Okay? Then they put the baby in November 16th. And you're supposed to wait 10 days until you go to the doctor. And then they do a blood test to confirm pregnancy. 
I did not wait 10 days. I waited six or seven days till um, Thanksgiving. But I took a test Thanksgiving morning and I got the tiniest, like, faintest positive line. And I was like, oh, I'm pregnant. I'm taking it. Like, I'm like showing everybody this little line. You can barely see it. I was like, that's a line, bro. And then a couple of days later, we went to the doctor. They did the blood <clears throat> test. And we had a really oh, high lay down, lay down. HCG, which is like the pregnancy hormone Should or whatever. It was really high. Like, they thought there were two babies in there. And I was like, what is going on? We only put one in there. But this one healthy baby in there. We are pregnant um we so that was beginning of december uh we waited until january 1st to announce because i had to come with the drama so i had to wait until it was the new year and when we announced it was like so we got we had like over 900 messages between instagram and facebook and it was just so much love and so much happiness and you could just tell that so many people have been praying for us and have been waiting for this to happen for us and it was it was literally like a miracle i can't even explain it like through this whole process it's just been so much positivity so much love so much support like and i, I don't I don't know would this all have worked had we not had we not had all the support and love that we've gotten through this journey. So yeah, I guess that's our update. We are pregnant. Like we oh go, go, oh go, 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 so go, 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 then go. we did a gender reveal Chevy, uh, like a week ago. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you guys what happened on the gender reveal because if you didn't see it, we're gonna post the video after this, so you just gotta watch that. But there is a baby in here and it's strong and healthy. We are 13 weeks pregnant and oh, just happy. When you see the gender reveal, you'll see his emotions when he found out oh what it is. Gosh. Oh my God. little big daddy. It was so cute. It was just like the wedding all over <laughs> again. Um, wait, open your phone. So that's our update as far as where we, what's gone on for the whole last year.